Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Our Community Cares. I am Daniela Levine Cava, County Commissioner for District 8, and we have been bringing you this series of public affairs shows for over a month. It has been really a wonderful journey. We've met some extraordinary people who've shared so much good information on how we can all cope with the coronavirus. We've covered every possible topic. We've talked about uh, landlord tenant issues, unemployment compensation. Uh, we've talked about the healthcare workers who are frontline uh, helping us every day, about hospitality and hotel workers. We have talked about mental health issues and how it's affecting all of us uh, psychologically to live through this time. We have uh, talked about um, the virus itself and the testing that's being done, the randomized test around Miami-Dade County to help us understand surveillance and the incidence of the virus uh, exposure in our community. So it's been really a whirlwind of topics. Uh, and if you've not had the chance to listen to some of them, they're all archived on our Facebook. So please take a look. You will learn a lot and enjoy them. So pass it on. So today we're bringing something very special for our small business owners. We know that you're the backbone of our economy. We know that most of you are really hurting uh, today. Uh, some of you are providing the kinds of services that turn out to be necessary or essential in a time when we're coping with a pandemic. But uh, even if you are, there are ways that you need to retool. And for most of us small business owners, uh, we know it's, it's a real struggle. So uh, we're delighted that Catherine Doble and Tiffany Gonzalez have joined us. They're not business partners per se, but they're two women business owners who do a great job and help each other out in their businesses, as you'll soon uh, find out. Um, Catherine is the president and founder of Engage Biz, that's I-N-G-A-G. -G. It's a digital marketing firm focused on goal-oriented, targeted social media <laughs> management, content creation, and email marketing. She founded the firm in 2011, and she has developed award-winning social media and online campaigns for all sizes of organizations, from top Fortune 500 companies to privately owned smaller businesses. And we'll hear from Tiffany Gonzalez. She is a CPA who brings eight years of diverse tax, financial, and business consulting experience, including to Catherine, and by the way, Catherine does Tiffany's social media, go figure. They obviously can recommend each other very highly. Uh, she has been uh, consulting with small and medium-sized business owners in South Florida and across the U.S. So since founding Accounting to Scale, great name, in 2014, which is by the way when I first came into office as commissioner, Tiffany has thoughtfully built a team of like-minded and qualified professionals who understand their clients and are committed to seeing their businesses grow. So these two local business women have been working to help each other and other local businesses navigate the COVID-19 uh, business climate. So now we're going to hear from them. They're going to share their own experiences and their insights on how businesses can pivot in a crisis from both the financial and marketing perspective. Welcome, Catherine and Tiffany. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you, ladies. Tiffany, we'll start with you. What do business owners need to do uh, right now to handle the current crisis from a financial perspective? Well, tracking expenses is extremely important. You know, now more than ever, business owners should know how much money they have in the bank and what their cash runway is, what their fixed expenses are. Uh, we call it break even point where you know how much money you need to bring in to at least cover um, those fixed expenses. And this is what we help business owners with on a monthly basis. We give them um, reporting that they can rely on. So business owners should be looking to their accountants or financial professionals to really help them from a financial perspective grasp what their expenses and income is right now and during the crisis. Excellent. Great for that. Thank you for that overview. And Catherine, what do business owners need to be doing right now to handle the current crisis from a marketing perspective? Yeah. The first thing that any real business owner should be looking at is identifying how they can help right now. You know, how can they help their community, what they should be doing, what their community needs from them and do exactly that. Once they've identified what they can do, then they can identify how the marketing uh, should come into that equation. The marketing is really all mostly online right now. We're all on our computers, we're on our phones. And so that's the place to be. 
So, you know, reach out online, find, figure out that email marketing, hop on social media, reach out to prospective and previous uh, clients, and also community partners. Figure out how to get the word out through your community partners. That's the name of the game at this moment. All marketing right now should really focus on being genuine, educational in nature, and providing value to the community. Again, it's just so key. Great. And how have you been providing local business owners with support during this crisis? So the first week we transitioned to working from home, we immediately launched two initiatives. We launched the Crisis Growth Webinar Series where we brought business owners and community groups in to learn about how they need to be communicating right now. And then we did happy hours. So our happy hours were really uh, kind of fun networking events and ways for business owners to continue to network and grow their business and explain how they're pivoting and changing um, their companies. Uh, everybody seems to catch on. Uh, and so there's been a lot of webinars now and a lot of happy hours. So we've changed our game a little bit. We are now offering one-on-one -on -one free strategy sessions. So for business owners that need that extra hand on, uh, hands-on conversation, we've been doing a lot of those. And um, we also added a new component to our happy hours where we brought in local businesses um, to do mixology and cooking lessons. So in between networking, you also get to learn how to make empanadas from Empanada Harry's um, and other fun things like that. So just finding new ways that we can continue to give back to business owners and also educate and, and help them continue to network. That's great, thank you. Sounds like so much fun. Uh, okay. Tiffany, did you wanna add anything to that? Yeah, I mean, for us right now, the most important thing is the assistance programs, like the Paychecks Protection Program. A lot of our business owners have been applying, and so it's been really important to get critical information to our clients that they need for these applications. You know, the first round of funding went pretty quickly. Today, the second round of funding opened up. So really being um, there for our clients and making that a top priority and getting them the reports on an expedited basis has kind of you know changed the way that we're supporting our, our business owners right now. Excellent. Um, and uh, let me just remind our listeners that you can post your questions or comments in the Facebook Live uh, comment section, and we will get to them uh, shortly. So please do engage with our speakers today. Thank you. Uh, so Tiffany, can you give us one piece of financial advice uh, that you feel most business owners need to hear right now? Yeah, so, you know, um, you know, I think when you started a business, you know, you took on a certain level of risk, you know, and now with these financial times, I, a lot of our business owners are thinking back to that time when they first started and that amount of risk that they took on. And a lot of people are questioning why they started a business, you know, what, what drove them to really um, decide to take on this risk. And so, my my piece of financial advice, you know, my piece of advice in general, besides looking at your costs and cutting the fat and looking at your processes, which are really important, is also to think about why you started. And I think that that will help drive a lot of people to make the best decisions and the best outcome for their business long term. You see a lot of businesses that are kind of hunkering down, and then you see a lot of businesses that are trying to innovate, like you said, and pivot to really support the current market. So you know, I encourage a lot of my business owners not only to look at the numbers, but also to think about, um, you know, why they're doing this. Very good. So get back to the basics and your motivation. That's wonderful. This is a good time for reflection for everybody, Thank right? Uh, great. So Catherine, we'll go to you. What's one piece of marketing advice that you think most business owners need to hear right now? Yeah, I think the biggest piece of advice I can give business owners right now is that the the community needs to hear from you. Your clients, they need to hear from you. Now is not the time to really go silent. You have options. You have control of your business. It takes a little creativity and ingenuity and you know a little bit of help sometimes to help pivot and change your business and market your business online and, and get there. And it takes a little bit of stripping away the fear. You know, be a little fearless. Uh, sometimes business owners are afraid to see themselves on camera or hear themselves. And you know, that's really where it is right now. And so, you know, now is not the time to to be shy. Now is the time I think, to really uh, step up. Can you give us some examples uh, of a situation where you were able to help a business owner reach a positive outcome during this pandemic? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm gonna give you three. So they're three very kind of different ones and I think that, that it'll give a good idea of what businesses can do. So the first one is we took over managing an account for a sushi restaurant pro bono. Um, we've been doing this for some 
uh, businesses for some restaurants because that are hurting. We we're helping out as much as we can. And, you know, the business owner was just overwhelmed and trying to keep the business open and struggling. Um, and since we've been posting to their account daily, just a daily post has increased their online orders by 50%, you know, just, and that's been a huge benefit to them. The second, example, yeah, the second example that I wanted to give is a lactation consultant. And so she came to us, she was referred to us for, and one participated in one of our marketing sessions. And we came up with a way to take her classes, her lactation classes online. Uh, and she was overwhelmed with joy because she can now offer, continue to offer her classes to expectant mothers. And the reality at the end of the day, when we ran the numbers with her new business model, her business is actually going to be more profitable than when she was hosting in-person classes. So it's just mm -hmm. a matter of figuring out how to do that and take that business and move it online and, and make that model different and then market it. You know, even with the marketing built into those costs, it still was going to be way more profitable than before. And the third one, and probably the one that we're very, very proud of is we've been helping Bear University in hosting virtual commencement ceremonies. And uh, they've been graduating their healthcare students. Um, oh my goodness. And getting them to the front line. And it's just uh, a little, something as simple as a virtual commencement and graduation is, is just so meaningful to these students. And especially before they go and prepare to go uh, help people that are uh, dealing with COVID right now. So it's just something that we feel very, very proud of. And um, we've been helping be part of those ceremonies and launching them. And now we're turning around and helping other schools do virtual graduation ceremonies, which is something that we weren't doing at all before, but it's now, you know, just a small way that we can appreciate some of our seniors. Those are really beautiful, beautiful examples. Thank you. And congratulations. You, you bring a lot of heart to your work. It's clear. That's wonderful. And, and uh, help people not only figure out how to market, but really how to reinvent themselves. Absolutely. In some cases, yeah. that's beautiful. Yeah. Um, Tiffany, do you want to add to that? Yeah, definitely. So I follow Catherine Doble's advice. Um, you know, we've pivoted our business extremely. We're now doing self-produced videos that we post on YouTube and LinkedIn and Instagram. Um, we've started doing webinars like these. I mean, there's so much valuable information and it's so difficult to communicate that information on a one-to-one -one basis. But when we're putting out content like this every single week, we're able to help so many more people. And so the feedback that we've gotten is incredible from the existing clients, the prospect clients. I'm seeing a lot of great feedback about the content that we're putting out and so you know we've gone from being able to just help our business owners to now helping the actual community which is which is great it's very satisfying yes and actually you're practicing what you preach because uh that's exactly what you ladies said at the beginning you know get out there see how you can help the community and that's exactly what you've done and that i'm sure is translating into business for you as well um very yeah. very encouraging uh so we do have a question from one of our listeners, John. Hi, John. Thank you so much for posting the question. Uh, everyone wants to know this. How can they get this money from the federal government, from the Paycheck Protection Program? And we know, of course, that it was out and three weeks later, the money was gone. We've heard terrible stories about the big businesses getting the money. We know the banks uh, were left to really interpret the rules and they often would grant it to the customers that they knew were very credit worthy uh, because they're not really clear how they're going to necessarily be covered. If it turns out to not be a bad loan, of course, these are forgivable loans if you follow the plan. So, you know, everything happened very, very quickly. Now this morning at 1030, it opened back up again. So what can you recommend to people how they can get access to it? Well, if they're not getting through to their banks, there's actually some online lenders and providers. You do want to be very careful with scams. So you want to make sure that it is a vouched for third party. For example, I know that Cabbage with a K um, is, a, is a provider online that is allowing you to submit applications um, through them. Um, but, you know, I do think that some of the banks now have kind of, with the first wave, got it together, figured it out, you know, um, put some better systems and processes in place so that now that they can handle this, this second wave. Um, but yeah, you definitely want to get the application in as soon as possible, whichever lender you decide to go with. Right. And um, what did I hear? I was listening to Senator Marco Rubio on an earlier uh, Zoom call today. And he was talking about that this amount of money will also go quickly. 
And Definitely. so it is really important to, to step up soon. I know some people who have applied to their bank and the bank wasn't able to handle it. And I know some people that actually changed banks to yeah. go with another bank and then that was able to help them. Now we're encouraging uh, community banks and um, credit unions. So various financial institutions, not just the big banks. And some sure. of them may be a little more agile and be able to, to help out quicker. Now, uh, the question was raised also, are these really forgivable loans? And what things does it cover? Yeah, so the most important thing is going to be tracking once you receive the money. 75% of it must be used for payroll. Another, the other 25% can be used for rent, utilities, um, and things like that. But I am encouraging all of my business owners to use 100% for payroll. It's so important that we retain our employees and, and keep people paid and working. Um, you know, they're going to be asking for documentation after the fact that you did use it for payroll. So making sure you have a good payroll company and that your accountant is on board. A lot of people are segmenting the funds into a different, a separate business account. So that it's very clear on what, um, what it's being used for. But as of right now, all the guidance speaks to, to it being forgiven as long as it's used properly and that you've tra you track it correctly. Great. And uh, also the employees don't necessarily even have to be working, right? Correct. Because they could be furloughed because you might not be allowed to be open as a business, but you don't want to let that delay the process. So you can bring them back on through this program, keep right. them uh, receiving their paychecks. And we know that this unemployment compensation system has been a nightmare to navigate. Uh, I heard the governor earlier today say that 300,000, I think, applications had been processed, which, if so, is really good news because last week it was only 80,000 and we're over a million applications. So uh, wow. we know that this uh, pay paycheck protection is really an important option to help uh, the income flowing and also to keep your business open. So maybe you're shut down now, but if you have to retool and find employees, you know, you're, it's going to be that much harder. To, to get back on track. So this is a really good program that people should try to uh, take themselves, uh, take advantage of. That's great. Um, so uh, we have some more time and the questions are not pouring in just yet. Uh, so why don't you tell us a little bit about your businesses and how you market your business? Sure, uh, I'll go first. Uh, so we're a digital marketing company. So a lot of what we do is obviously online. We do a lot of email marketing. Um, we try to make our email marketing as genuine as possible. It's mostly letters from me, uh, thoughts and things on marketing that our businesses should be doing. Everything though has to have an educational component, a piece to it that we feel it's important to put in somebody's inbox. I think the most important thing is that if we're gonna send something to your inbox and everybody gets a lot in their inbox, it has to be of value. Um, and so that's something that we, we, we do follow, we recommend to our clients and we follow. Um, we obviously do a lot of social media and advertising online. Um, and, you know, a lot of it, though, and this is really the name of the game to any marketing is relationship based. You know, we are a, a relationship Our people are do business with people. And um, it's through kind of conversations with other business owners and through these things that we continue to market our business the best way possible and finding ways to help out is number one, especially right now. Yeah, I think it's a Definitely. it's a beautiful message, you know, that you, as we said before, that as you're serving the community, it's like we're all helping each other. We're creating that web, that network. Uh, Tiffany, you had something to add? Yeah, so we're an accounting firm that focuses primarily on bookkeeping. I find that a lot of business owners are really good at the technical service or the product that they sell. But when it comes to number, numbers, they get very anxious and they don't really want to spend time on them or, or deadlines. I mean, we live by deadlines in, in this firm. So we support a business owner by acting as their outsourced accounting department. Um, a lot of our business comes through word of mouth, but we use social media as a means to stay top of mind and then deliver really great content. So Catherine's firm helps us do that, you know, in the posting of all the different platforms and we strategize about what's the most important thing we should be talking about right now. What are the next upcoming deadlines? And ever since this all started happening, you know, it's been easy to pick what's the topic everyone wants to hear about. So, you know, it's true. We do have, <laughs> we're all following the same news, right? Yeah. It's very different than the usual, yeah. right? So yeah. talk about that. Why is that? Um, 
what are the benefits of that, of us all focusing in the same direction these days? Well, I think it allows you to see, you know, who has your back as a company, you know, who, who is really putting out the information consistently, you know, the information that comes is, is difficult to understand, it's difficult to read. And so some of us are really dedicating time and uh, resources into figuring out what it says and then disseminating that information. So the scary part about this is that there is a lot of misinformation and there's there's facts that aren't true you know just the other day i had read that someone that that people think that they have to pay the stimulus back and um the way that it's worded could be confusing but that's not the case so we put out an entire video on on why that's not the case and then you know why people haven't received the stimulus we're not exactly sure but we have some reasons why from the guidance we've read so we put out a video on seven reasons why you may not have received it. So getting this information out to so many people and then just kind of like, you know, uh, bringing clarity to the confusion is a priority for me right now. That's excellent. Excellent. So you're running your own public affairs program. (laughs) From a financial perspective, using the services of Engage Biz, yes. (laughs) Uh So if people want to see the different content that you've created, they should go to Engage Biz? So we actually have, uh, they should definitely use Engage Services. Um, we, we have a YouTube video, a YouTube channel called uh, At Accounting to Scale. We're on Instagram, At Accounting to Scale, Facebook, At Accounting to Scale, and then LinkedIn, my personal page, Tiffany Gonzalez, CPA. Uh-huh. Excellent, great. Um, all right, well, we have a question. How does one apply for the Paycheck Protection Program? Uh, does one have to go into a bank or financial institution or can it be done online? For example, people are not necessarily ready to leave the house. Yeah, definitely. You, a lot of the banks have online uh, portals at this point. So you'll want to check with your online banking website to see what they're doing. A lot of the big banks have portals. Um, I know some of the smaller banks, you have a, there's a, you can call in and there's a, a business banker that is assigned to, helping um, people with new applications, but it is through third-party banks. Okay, and uh, we had the question uh, again about which what banks are still accepting applications for the second round. Well, it just opened up at 10.30 in the morning, so <laughs> I don't know. Uh, are all financial institutions taking part, or do they decide whether or not they'll take part? I'll let Catherine take that one. Oh, All okay. right. <laughs> um, we do work with uh, some financial institutions. I'm also married to a banker, so I have some insights there. Not all financial institutions are taking part. Some have previous relationships with the SBA, and therefore it was easier for them to get involved in the beginning. Some chose not to get involved at all, even from the beginning, because they felt that it was too fast, too confusing, and they didn't want to be part of it. Um, and the second round, some of them are still trying to catch up from the applications that were submitted the first round that didn't get funded. So they're trying to get through just to get those first set of applications funded right now and then possibly open it up. So it really depends on the banking institution. I think my biggest piece of advice, and again, I'm not in finances, I'm in marketing, but being around uh, the financial institutions and being married to a banker would be to pick up the phone and call the banker that you've been working with, the banker that opened your business account, the person that helped you order checks whoever that person was to pick up the phone and find somebody in your bank and reach them, reach out to them and get them on the phone would be my best piece of advice. Very good. And what I'll, and what I'll chime in here is if you don't have a banker and you're now realizing that you don't, this is a really important time to make sure that after this quarantine, you set up your team, your accountant, your banker, your lawyer. It's so important that you as a business owner have that executive outsourced team um, for these kinds of situations. Excellent point. And we want to be clear, this is good for small businesses, but is it also good for self-employed or gig workers to apply, like for the paycheck protection? What, who, who can qualify? Yes, definitely. Self-employed individuals who don't have a payroll, who have who receive pay via a 1099, or they file what's called a Schedule C in their, per, in their personal tax return. This is what we call the gig economy. They can apply as well. Okay, excellent. Okay, well, we're getting to the end of the half hour. Uh, So what would be some closing advice that you would have for small businesses, whether or not it has to do with this coronavirus era? Who's ready? 
uh, I can go. Um, so I think my biggest piece of advice is that marketing doesn't have to be complicated, whether it's during coronavirus or post coronavirus or before coronavirus, you know, you should really be looking at what, what do you want your business to look like and how do you build it and tell that story, tell the story of what your business is doing, explain the problem you're trying to solve, go back to really the basics when it comes to your business and then translate that into your marketing. Again, people buy from people. We like stories. You know, tell us your story as a business, and you're more likely to end up with better marketing results and better overall results as well. You know, there sometimes business owners get overwhelmed with a sheer multitude of communication channels. They are confused if they should be using Facebook or LinkedIn or Instagram or email or what what they need to be doing. My biggest piece of advice would say would be to pick one and learn it, Google it, take an online course or hire a, a company that can handle it for you like ours, but pick something that you can figure out how to do, become good at it, and then move on to the next one. It doesn't have to be as complicated. All it really is, marketing, is repetition. Repetition, repetition, repetition. It's probably not gonna work the same first time. It's gonna start working multiple, multiple times down the road. And now, right now, especially during coronavirus, is the time to start experimenting with that. We're living in a pandemic. People are not expecting perfect. They're just not expecting perfect right now. So start doing videos, start figuring out how to do Instagram, jump into those different platforms. You know, we, now is the time to really figure out what you want your business to look like and start playing around with that marketing for it. Great, great. All right, ladies, do you have any closing remarks? I was just going to say to assess your record keeping, if it took more than a day to get your documentation order for these applications, and you really need to think about, you know, the, the way that you have things organized and who's helping you in the financial aspect of your business. Um, it's really important to have a good accountant to make sure that, you know, in times like these, they're there for you. Excellent. Well, you've had a couple of shout outs on the Facebook. Uh, Lena Acosta Sandal says, this is wonderful. Tiffany of Accounting to Scale has helped my business in a million ways. Glad everyone gets to hear her sage advice. And Alyssa Linares says, Rockstar women doing great things for our community. So there you go. What you're doing is, is noticed and uh, very much appreciated. Uh, so ladies, thank you. This has been really informative and I'm happy to see uh, women in, in successful business careers in your own your own businesses. So congratulations to both of you and the way that you work together, which is very beautiful, helping each other you, in Michelle. your respective roles. So um, you've heard how to reach out to these women. Let's just do one more time the name of how they can contact you. Tiffany, how do they contact you? So I'm Tiffany Gonzalez, CPA of Accounting to Scale. You can find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, Facebook at Accounting to Scale. You can also reach me at Tiffany at Accounting to Scale. Excellent. And how about you, Catherine? So Catherine Doble of Engage Biz, that's Engage with an I. Um, and you can follow us on, again, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. We're all over the place. Um, but you can also send me an email at Catherine, K-A-T-H-E-R-I-N-E, at Engage with an I dot B-I-Z dot biz. Um, and feel free to reach out. Any question is, is, a, is a not a bad question. We're used to getting questions and we're open to helping as many business owners as possible. Excellent, all right, ladies. So I'm going to um, thank you and I'm going to give a little bit of a, uh, 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 I'm gonna tell people a little bit about our next show, which will be on Wednesday. It will be a little different than usual. It will not be at four o'clock. It will be six o'clock in the evening. It will not be on Zoom and Facebook. It will be a telephone town hall. We've posted it on Facebook. You can register. We also have a survey that we have sent out to the community. We really want to hear from you what your experiences are in this coronavirus era. We've received almost 600 responses so far, and we just started, I think, Friday. So we're really thrilled about that. But please, please, and if you ladies want to help boost it, we'll be grateful. <laughs> so we have the survey. We have the Telephone Town Hall looking at how we're coping with coronavirus and the road ahead. I've actually come up with a little tagline here. I'll run it by you. R to the third power, responsibly reopen and recover. What I do love you think? That. Wow. Responsibly Great. reopen and recover. All right. <laughs> Together. 
together. <laughs> so we'll, that'll be our theme on Wednesday. And we're going to take Friday off. So no public affairs, no Our Community Cares on Friday. Uh, <laughs> and we'll be back to you with uh, next week's schedule. But we are going to be slowing down a bit. We've been three times a week for mm. five weeks. And uh, we're going to start uh, taking a turn to responsibly reopen and recover. And uh, so please stay tuned. Follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter, and sign up for our email as well, uh, which uh, is a great one, I must say. So uh, we're, we're again, thank you so very much to these wonderful ladies. Thank Virtual you. applause. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next time. Bye, thank you. Oh yeah, be safe, be strong, and be kind. Very good. Oh.